Another small parcel has arrived today for the Amplify project and this is the Speaker Isolation and DC Protection Board. It's made by a company called Clover and it's called the Pro 5.5. It all seems to be complete. This is side two of the board and nothing really to say about that at all except it's quite nicely made. All the component values are marked on the board and the printed circuit board is of high quality. These are the two relays as supplied. They are PCB connections as you'd expect and it does claim to be Omron. Now whether these are genuine I don't know but looking inside the contact do look nice and beefy. But as the whole kit costs 11 and a half New Zealand dollars it's pretty good value for money. The capacitors are nothing special although they do say they're 105 degree Celsius which if that's true is pretty good although these won't be subjected to any amount of heat at all very little above ambience so I think they will be fine. These are the semiconductors we have a blue LED, two rectifier diodes, one regulator, one rectifier and one chip can you spot the deliberate mistake here? No screw in one of the terminals. Um, I guess we come to expect this, a bit of lack of quality control on some of these kits. But I'm hoping it's just an M3 and not some peculiar screw because I've got thousands of M3s and I can deal with that very, very quickly. I'm not going to show you me building this because quite frankly it's a bit boring so unless I see anything particularly interesting we'll just assume that all goes together well and I'll confirm that when I've finished. Right well the module's finished and the only problem is it doesn't work. Now when something doesn't work if you're like me the first thing you do is suspect that you've screwed up somewhere. A component's ran the wrong way, which I know this is hard to believe, but I have done that before. I went round with a f my magnifying glass, checked all my soldered joints, and I couldn't see anything wrong. Just as a thought though, if you're ever th thinking of buying one of these modules, you need to have a great deal of patience and also a little bit of knowledge. First of all, this um, regulator, it doesn't show you which way around it goes. Now, I've used regulators before and I happen to know the pins and just by having a look at the bottom of the PCB, it's, it's pretty obvious which way around it goes. But down in here, the main operational chip, there are no markings on that chip whatsoever. I ended up having to go online and look for the pin layout and do a bit of reverse engineering to see which way around it would go. Eventually I found this out but it just annoys me that these this information is not supplied. So what's the problem? Well it's very very simple actually. The regulator here is a 12 volt regulator. So anything the other side of that must work on 12 volts or less. And the problem is they've supplied the wrong relays, but they are 24 volts. Now there's no way on this planet a 24 volt relay is going to pull in with 12 volts. So that's assuming, of course, that there's no losses within the chip, which clearly would be. So you wouldn't expect to find more than about 10 and a half, maybe 11 volts on those relays. And there's no way on this earth they will pull in on that sort of voltage. In fact, these particular ones, I've tested them and they need, they will just about pull in at 14 14 and a half volts but a long way less. Now you could say 
this is supposed to run on uh, an AC input of 12 to I believe 24 volts so you think oh, I'll just up the voltage going in but that won't help because you've still basically up against the 12 volt regulator so all that will happen is this will get hot and as they get not given a heat sink you don't really want any more volts going in than you need to I mean why put 24 volts in here when you've got to lose 12 volts on this chip which will just burn if you're very near that level you'll probably get away without a heat sink but no heat sink is supplied so when you turn it on at the moment the blue LED which I've temporarily fitted there comes on after about two seconds and volts appear on the cord of the relay but obviously nothing happens because of that for some reason you get a spare electrolytic just I don't know why you just do so what's the answer well of course the answer is um, to contact the seller and um, get a refund because basically as it stands it won't work it can't work and there's nothing you can do to make it work well obviously the answer is to replace the relays with 12 volt relays for me to send this back to China um, it will cost me in excess of that um, simply because unlike China where the government subsidizes the postal system I think the sellers know that you're not going to sell it send it back but eBay does say that they will um, moderate and get this sorted out now I've sent an email to them yesterday the supplier I won't name the supplier at the moment because the supplier may not know that these kits are incorrectly well the parts are incorrect because they only come in a plastic bag and if you look on eBay there are hundreds of people selling these kits and when you look at the reviews of them this problem of the relays has been known for over seven months and yet they're still sending them out some people say they do have the right relays and are very happy and I'm sure when these relays are replaced or sorted out um, it will the module will work quite satisfactorily there is only another issue which I've forgotten about you can't actually mount them because the holes on this side are too close to the terminal block on a lighter note resistors have come which I showed you in the previous video and they're now mounted with silicon grease well that they're not mounted with silicon grease they're, <laughs> they're mounted with uh, m3 screws but they have silicon grease under under each one and you may see uh, uh, the linking wires because these are four ohms each are open not insulated that's done purposely because it's very easy to be able to hang scopes and probes and things on there uh, not so easy if you um, insulate them so that's done purposely and we're only dealing with low voltages and if it should short to here it doesn't really matter because it's not going anywhere this is a, an up-to-date view of where we are so far with the amplifier now again obviously nothing is cable tied yet because we we've got a way to go but the modules are mounted on the heatsink I did say that they'd be down this way a bit ideally they'd be in the middle and I suppose I could have put them here but they'd be awfully close to the switch mode power supply which I didn't think was a good idea but when that eventually does work it will sit in there on the appropriate standoffs so it's all filling quite well